Welcome to this Digital Arts Guild video tutorial, Maya Dynamics Breakage. My name is Aaron F. Ross, and I'm here to show you what I know about this somewhat old school technique in which we shatter an object into shards. This is a bit of a sleight of hand, in fact, because the model before the impact is different than these shards. They're actually two separate models. That's an example of the tricks of the trade that I'm going to show you in this and other videos from Digital Arts Guild. This is an intermediate level tutorial. If you've never used Maya Rigid Body Dynamics before, I advise that you take a look at the video tutorial Maya Dynamics Catapult. It covers rigid body dynamics and you'll need to know that before you can do this breakage exercise. This is a classic traditional workflow and it will work in all versions of Maya. First, we must model the shards of the broken object. Then we can animate their initial movement with standard keyframing techniques, but we'll switch the dynamics on at a certain time. Then we can push the rigid bodies around in certain directions using fields, then bake the simulation to keyframes. Finally, we'll animate the visibility to achieve the object substitution effect, and then render a preview. Let's begin, as always, by creating a project folder. In Maya 2012, there's a new project window. And within this project window, I want to click the big New button to create a new project. And then I'll define the name of my project, which I'll call Breakage Project. You'll see that the location is set to the current user's Documents Maya Projects folder. If I needed to create my project in a different folder, I would just browse to choose a different location. All of the subfolders are filled with their default names, and I'll simply click Accept. This creates the new project folder structure, and also sets it as the currently active project. We can take a look at that. Here's my Maya folder in my current user's My Documents, and inside that you'll see Projects, and now we have Breakage Project. Now we're ready to begin laying out our scene. As always, scale is an essential consideration when working with dynamics. The first thing we need to do is go into our Preferences. Window, Settings, Preferences, Preferences. We need to check in on Settings, Working Units, Linear, and they should be set to Centimeter. You should always leave this value at Centimeter, and then according to the needs of your scene, you can interpret a Maya unit as whatever you like. In this case, we're going to assume that a Maya unit is a centimeter, and leave it at that. That means that we're going to build our first test scene at real-world scale. Our first test object will be a simple brick. I'll go to the Create menu and choose Polygon Primitives Cube. Click and drag on the grid in the perspective view to define the footprint of the cube. Release the mouse, then click and drag to set the height. I'll go into the channel box inputs to Polycube and set these metric dimensions. The width will be 9, the height 8 centimeters, and the depth 25 centimeters. Now that's scaled up to the size of a brick. Grab the Move tool and just position that up a little bit. Go back to the Create menu and choose Polygon Primitives Plane. Once again, drag in the viewport. And then go to the channel box inputs, Polyplane. And I'll set both the width and the height equal to 100 centimeters, or 1 meter. Very good. I've got my simple scene laid out. Before we attempt to shatter any objects or apply rigid body dynamics, we need to do a little bit of scene housekeeping. First of all, rigid body objects cannot have history on them. Let's go to Edit, Delete All by Type History. And to prove that we deleted construction history, we can select one of these objects. And now, in the channel box, you'll see there's no more primitive creation node there. I'll select both the objects, set their translate and rotate values all to zero, just to send them to the center of the world. 
And then I'll select the ground plane and turn its visibility off temporarily by just typing in zero. And I'm ready to begin shattering this brick. I'll select it and press the F key. At this point, I recommend you save your scene because sometimes the shatter effect can make Maya crash. With the object selected, go to the Dynamics menu set and choose Effects, Create Shatter, Options. In the Options dialog, choose the Solid Shatter tab. In fact, there are three different types of shatter effect. With the Solid Shatter tab active, we can adjust the number of shards and the jagginess, and also the seed value, which will produce a different pattern of cracks. Click the Create button, and now we've got a shattered version overlaid on top of the original brick. I'll press the 5 key in my viewport, tumble around. Let's open up the Outliner, Window Outliner. And now let's take a look and see what we have. We've got Solid Shatter 1, which is a group, and it includes all of these shards. Here's our original brick. I'm just going to hide that, go over to the channel box, set its visibility equal to zero, and press Enter. In order to prevent errors with the rigid body dynamics, we need to move all these shards away from one another. And that's a bit of a tedious process. I'll choose the Move tool, and then pull them all slightly away from one another so that none of them touch. You need to leave a gap of a few millimeters between each shard. Otherwise, your rigid body simulation is not going to work, and it won't be very much fun. If there are any very small shards that you don't need, you might want to delete them. If you see any issues with the geometry, such as holes in it or other problems, you'll need to address those. But usually the output of the shatter effect is pretty clean. Now we're ready to construct a simple rig to animate the shards and the original cube. I'll go back to that cube and make it visible once again. Type in a 1. Next, I'll create a locator, and I'm going to animate that locator to move these objects around. Create locator. Then in the local scale x, y, and z, I'll give that a value of, let's say, 20 centimeters. That makes it larger than the bricks. Don't use the transform scale attributes. Use these local scale attributes here. Next, we're going to constrain the parts together. I'm going to use a constraint instead of parenting or linking, because that way it'll be easier for me to control the visibility of the objects. First, we'll constrain the cube to the locator. In the outliner, choose the locator first, then hold down the control key and click the cube. Go to the animation menu set, and in the constraint menu, choose parent, and you can go to the options and just reset them to make sure that you have the default options, and click Add. Now if I select the locator and move it, you'll see that the brick is constrained to it. I'll press the Z key to undo that. Next we'll constrain the shards to the locator. Once again, choose the locator first in the outliner, then hold down Control and click on the group, not the individual shards, and once again, constrain parent. Now if I select the locator and move it, you will see that both the original brick and those shards are moving with the locator. 